All right, Psalms chapter 3. Whew. A Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Verse 1. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. I don't care how many wars break out. I don't care how many threats, how much steam and fire is breathing out of the dragon's mouth. Guess what? God is a very present help. God is our refuge and strength, as Pat just spoke about from Psalms 46. We have no need to fear. We're in the best care we can possibly have. Listen, we don't know what's coming down the pipe. We don't know how hard it's going to hurt. We don't know how, how long it's going to last. But God will sustain you. He'll sustain you and me throughout the whole thing. He is our painkiller. He's our anesthesia. You hear me? He's our Novocaine. He will erase the pain that everyone else is still feeling. He will remove the fear and keep you in perfect peace. He will calm your nerves and settle you. Settle you down so you can sleep like a baby while everybody else is, is, is going back and forth on the floor, prancing back and forth, just worrying and, and walking and worrying and walking and trying to figure it out. God will keep you. Are you in him? That's the question. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. Starting at verse 1. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured at a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters the waters were to the ankles again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterwards, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he said, then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. 
and there shall be a very great multitude of fish because these waters shall come thither for they shall be healed and everything that shall live whither the river cometh and it shall come to pass that the fishes that stand upon it from Iglidi even unto Iniglaim, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many, exceeding many. But the miry places, check this out, y'all. The miry places, that's muddy, that's slushy, that's dirty. The miry places thereof and the marshes shall not. Mm, mm, mm. The marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Mm, mm, mm. Now I'm just going to go here to verse 14, and we're going to stop right there. Thus saith the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions and ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning the which I, left, uh, I lifted up mine hand to give it unto your fathers, and this shall fall unto you for an inheritance. Do you know what that water is ushering out from the sanctuary? Ushering out from, it's called living water. That's the Holy Ghost, the living water of God. The fishes are the multitudes of people. When they talk about the trees and the leaves for medicine, the, tr the leaves on the trees are for the healing of the nations. Whosoever will, be saved, whosoever will step in, whosoever will submerge themselves in the living water shall be saved, shall be protected, shall be sustained, shall be fed, shall be provided for, shall be healed, and shall walk into their inheritance. You see, God has precious promises for us. And even though all hell is breaking loose, it doesn't mean that you are going to live without, that you are going to live a miserable life now. Do you realize, I was thinking when I was reading these scriptures about Lazarus. Remember when Lazarus, I know you, most of you have heard the story of when Lazarus died. And they were calling on Jesus. He was in town. And Lazarus was Jesus' friend. And his two sisters, Mary and Martha, had sent for him. But Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost to wait a few days and handle his business, what he was already doing. He was doing ministry. So by the time he got to Lazarus, Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead four days. Now, what did they greet him with? Lord, I mean, can you imagine how they felt? This is his friend. You could have been here. If you had been here, he wouldn't have had to have died. He could have been healed. He would have been alive now. Almost like they were um, uh, jamming him up. Like, you know, what kind of friend are you? Here, you got the power and you didn't even come for your own friend? What kind of friend are you? <coughs> they're hurting, they're miserable. Imagine how many people in this world right now are hurting, <coughs> they're miserable, they're angry, they're discouraged, disheartened because of all that's gone wrong. The government doesn't care. They're playing all kind of political tiddlywinks 
They're not getting the people the help they need. Everybody's got all their little agendas. While the hurting still hurt. While the poor do without. While the poor get poorer. Mm -hmm. The widows do without. Can't do anything to your house. You can't get your car fixed. You can't get the meds you need. You can't, <clears throat> can't get the shoes that got holes in your in, uh, in the souls replaced because nobody's there to help you out. They're there to help the rich. This country is a capitalistic society. They can care less for the poor. They're in their <clears throat> all the benefits go to the rich. That's the way it goes. So what ends up happening? You're left hanging high and dry while they're trying to 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 have their agendas met. And then win this argument, win that debate, and win this vote, and win that whatever. The poor are left out in the cold. But guess what? But God. God takes care of his people. God is our source. Remember that. Not the government. The government, they're taking care of their own baby. They're not thinking about you. But God is. He's mindful of the least of these. And this is what God says. He's going to bring judgment. Because of all the years and all the games and all the, 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 the shenanigans that they've been doing. Trying to line their pockets. While the people who have needs that they could have easily met. They hold back because they're too busy taking care of themselves. They're too busy making their pockets fat. That's the reason we're going to see judgment fall. It's, it's going to happen all over because there are a lot of crooked governments in this world. And I don't think that one is that much better than the other. As much as we get our propaganda thinking we're the best and your country gets the propaganda thinking you're the best and that country gets their propaganda being told they're the best, trust me, they're all crooked. That's what the Bible means when it says wickedness in high places. So no, God is mindful of you. You're not out there alone. It may feel like it. It may feel like it. But let me let me admonish you to cry out to God. He says, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Call on his name. His name is Jesus. Call on him. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Cry out to him. Reach out to him. Humble yourself that he may exalt you. Trust God, not man. Man got too many games going on. They got too many uh, agendas going on to benefit themselves. It's like once they take care of them, if there's something left, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll throw you a crumb or two. But see, God knows how to give you the very best. He knows how to totally fulfill you on the inner man. Well, you're not restless, nervous, fearful, and, and anxious anymore. He knows how to settle you down. No pill on this planet can do in your emotions what God can do. You hear me? All right. So I just want you to be encouraged. It's not going to be a long message. Just know that God's in control. You hear me? God's in control. And he is definitely going to bring judgment. That's the part we don't want to hear, that he's going to bring judgment. That's the hard part. And when things look like it's a lost cause, and there's so many people who have died, so many things that have gone wrong in society, and you're wondering, what is next? Trust me, God knows what's next. He's not playing games. He's not sitting there waiting to play psych. What God promises, he will give. Anyway, Father, we ask you right now, Lord, to encourage your people. We ask you, Lord, to be that lifter up of our heads. We ask you to strengthen all of us on the inner man. 
We ask you to come through. Even make the governments come through with the help they got right in their hand that they're holding so tight to for whatever their little secret reasons are. I pray, Lord, you force their hand to let go and release the help that the people need so they can come up out of these or out of these strongholds and these pit holes that, that this whole time has put them in, Father. I pray you make COVID disappear off the planet. I pray for a miracle, Lord, a miracle of provision, protection, peace, healing. Lord, please sustain your people even through this famine. In Jesus' name I pray. I thank you, Lord, and I bless your name. Amen.